I want to share with you a way of using your keyboard to switch applications with no lag whatsoever, but crucially also resize the windows of those applications. Now in a moment I'm going to show you a recording of my screen and it's a, it's a wide 40 inch screen and that is because it's a bit easier to show you how easy it is to switch between these applications and move them to different areas of that window. And by the same token, this technique, this, this approach works across multiple screens too. So if you are somebody with a multi, multiple monitor setup, you can easily move the screens across to other monitors and back again and have default positions for those applications too. So the way I have things set up at the minute is I'm usually using my hyper key, which in case you don't know what the hyper key is, it's basically a combination of all the other modifier keys together and with either a, a programmable keyboard or with some keyboard programming software, you can map a single key to effectively be all those modifiers being pressed at once, like Shift, Alt, Control, Command. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is my normal sort of working area when I'm at home. This is a 40 inch screen, so I, there's like, I don't know, 5,100 and something pixels one way, 2,000 and something the other. So it's a decent amount of screen real estate. And then what I use is um, the hyper key, which I've got set in a couple of places. But if, for example, I want to switch to Safari, I can hyper S, that's my Safari selected. I can then move that to the left-hand side of the screen um, with hyper left, hyper right that side of the screen. Hyper one puts it 1920 by 1080 there. Two gives it half of that. Three put, puts it on the other side. And then suppose I want to switch to Kitty. I could just do hyper K and I'm into Kitty. Move back to Final Cut Pro. I can do um, hyper P, hyper C would open me Sublime and that's down in a completely useless place there. So if I wanted that on the left hand side of the screen, I can just hyper and left and that's in position. If I want my finder window, I can switch to that with hyper F. And again, I can move this arbitrarily. So let's suppose I wanted that full screen, that's uh, hyper and zero. If I wanted it just on the, the final third, I've got that up to hyper nine. Hyper six is first two thirds. Hopefully you get the idea here. By the same token, you can see I'm gonna just alt tab here. And you see I haven't got Chrome open at the minute. I don't have to open it first for these to work either. If I want to have Chrome now, I can just do Hyper G. That's going to spin up Chrome. And again, I can do up, down. So down gives me this view of a whole bunch of stuff. Up gives me quarters. Um, so again, quite useful to, to sort of get a, a bird's eye view of all the stuff that you're, you're working on. You can also set entirely um, custom areas of the screen as well. Like, you know, if you want Hyper and 5 to always put your uh, certain sized window right in the center of your display, you can do that too. Basically, the sky is the limit. But the key thing is here, to organize windows, it's a single key press. Well, modifier and a single key press. To switch applications, it's a single key press. So to use this, I'm using a couple of tools. Um, you can use, there's, there's different tools with which you can accomplish effectively the same result. But the two that I use, that I most like using, are Rectangle Pro, which is like £8.50 or something like that uh, for me here in the UK. And I also use um, Alfred app, which again, you get the paid license for the bits and pieces that you actually need. So that's 30 something pounds here in the UK for a license. There are other um, applications that can do similar things like Raycast, um, like uh, Keyboard Maestro, you might use to set up your keyboard shortcuts. I had tried Raycast for a while, but I didn't find its execution of moving the windows as well as using Alfred and Rectangle Pro. It may be better now, but that was some time ago when I tried it. But the limitation I found with um, Raycast is that I couldn't shift application windows onto secondary screens and back again easily. But if you don't have a fully programmable keyboard, you're almost certainly want, going to want something like Keyboard Maestro on Mac OS, and that lets you do the hyper key that we said. You could accomplish this with a combination of other keys. It's just not gonna be anywhere near is sort of ergonomic and robust. Okay, so first of all, I'm, the, the sort of two parts of this is we've got to set some stuff up in Alfred and we've got to set some stuff up in Rectangle. We're gonna look at Rectangle first because that's probably the easiest thing. This is the, um, the Rectangle Preferences window. And you can see here that there is a whole bunch of different sort of screen layouts here. And there's a shortcut window here. So if I wanted to do an almost maximized layout, which I don't, but let's suppose we do, I might set that to say um, Hyper and Seven. And that, that would be it. And then when I press that shortcut, the, the window that's currently active is going to get set to that position. Now I'm going to take that back out again now. Um, but you can see that there's a load of defaults for rectangle anyway. Um, so, you know, top half of the screen, bottom half of the screen, so I can use hyper, up, down, left, right to shift a window around my screen area. And there's loads and loads of defaults for, 
first third, last third, two thirds, last two thirds, you can see that th there is a lot. However, you might also want to set up, like for example, I use, because I've got a, a bigger screen than I would want for recording um, content like this, I have a shortcut which is Hyper One, which sends the window to a 1920 by 1080 selection of the screen, which is what you can see here with this Alfred um, workflow window. And to do that in Rectangle Pro, you just have these custom shortcuts. So you can see here, um, my Hyper One is set to start at the top left. It's 1920 wide, 1080 high, um, and then you can shut. You can set your shortcut here over on the left. That's Hyper Two is left hand side of that HD area. Hyper Three right hand side of that HD area. And that's it. Once you've set those shortcuts up in Rectangle. Rectangle just happily runs in the top in the menu bar of your computer. Set it to come on automatically, you know, as your, as your computer starts. And you never have to think about, you know, resizing your windows because you could just do it all with these um, keyboard shortcuts. So that's Rectangle Pro sorted. So we can move our windows about where we want them now. And But what we really want, the kind of the big missing piece of the puzzle for me was always, how do I quickly change from one application to another without having to reach for the mouse go to the dock, click it, or do the old Alt-Tab thing to switch applications. Inside Alfred, they've got this thing called Workflows, and you can use these for all manner of things. I have a very limited you know, use of this, but excellent for this use case. So I've made one here called Quick Launches. Now the great thing about this setup is that it's smart enough to know if I do like a, an Alt and K to switch to Kitty, not only is it smart enough to switch instantly to it, but if that application isn't open, it will open it up for me as well. And this looks more complicated than it actually is. But what this is showing is basically uh, an application that I want to open, and then an associated trigger that fires off that application. So you can make this either way around, but the way I tend to do it is I'll do a trigger, I'll set a hotkey. Let's use the example of uh, V. Okay, so I'm gonna do Hyper-V, I always set this to be passed through to workflow, you don't need to change that, you don't need to change the thing underneath. I never set this limitation either of it only working when it's got focus because I want this to work wherever I am in my system, I want to be able to press this hotkey, get this application focused. Um, so there's my hotkey, and then what I want to do is associate that with a particular application. So we go and grab our application now, so again you can right click, actions, come down to uh, launch apps or files. So then you just browse to whatever it is you want to open. So let's suppose I wanted Affinity Designer. I click Accept, I click Save. So you can see here now I've got my shortcut over here. I've got the thing that I want that shortcut to do, what these two aren't connected like. All these others have got this little line between them to show that they're connected. So you can see there it tells you to shift an option to connect. So I'm gonna do that over here. Click on our um, the thing that we want to connect it to, and that's it, we're done. So now, if I do our Hyper and V, this will probably appear off screen just because um, it's bigger than this window that I've set, but look, again, I can use my Hyper and one, um, and that sticks it in that top corner. And that is it, with that set up, you know, that is done, you never have to think about these things again. So you can see, there's a boatload of those there that I've set up. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of those now, I'm not gonna use that. So with that set up, yeah, you can instantly switch to any of those applications that you've set up here, and you can rearrange the windows of that application with the shortcuts that we set up in Rectangle Pro. I've found this to be an absolute game changer in terms of productivity. I find myself rarely using the mouse for anything, like, well, certainly not for arranging windows or launching applications. If you're used to alt-tabbing, using the mouse to open your applications, even something like Spotlight um, or um, Alfred to quick launch apps, you find you just don't do that anywhere near as much now because you get these things sort of dialed in in your brain and it's just very, very quick to, to swap these applications or move them around. So I found this a lot simpler than things like your Buy or, or Hammer Spoon, which I know can do a bunch of other stuff. It's not a true tiling window manager, but for my use cases, this is a very simple, straightforward setup and gets me kind of 90% of those other more convoluted um, solutions. Give it a whirl. Let me know how you find it. Um, I'd love to have your comments uh, down below. Let me know how you get on with it. You know the deal. Please like, subscribe, buy my stuff, whatever. Uh, see you again sometime.